Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, you know I'm what you need. And we're about to talk about something exceptional that has happened in boxing that people haven't realized just how historic it is. And I'm going to actually go through it with you guys just so you guys can see. It's just crazy. It really is ridiculous what this thing is. So let's go into it. So Manny Pacquiao beat Keith Thurman, okay, at the age of 40. But there's something even more crazy about this. Let's start off with Sugar Ray Robinson, for example. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So Sugar Ray Robinson, he was born in 1921. Okay. He uh, actually debuted in 1940. So he was basically in his 19th year. He was 19 years old when he debuted. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about Sugar Ray Robinson is his last championship win was against Carmen Basilio, okay, his last championship win, he, he fought some younger fighters after that and so on, but his last championship win was against Carmen Basilio, and that happened in 1958, that was his 18th year, it wasn't, it wasn't 18 years that passed, but it was his 18th year when he won the middleweight championship beating back Carmen Basilio, it was a split decision win, the first time Carmen Basilio got it. The second time he got it from Carmen Basilio, who was fight of the year, according to Ring Magazine. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, so I'm talking it out as well. The judges' scorecards were 66-69, 71-64, and 72-64. Basically, Carmen Basilio won, uh, according to Frank uh, Sikora. John Bray had it for uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Franklin Spike McAdams also had it for Sugar Ray Robinson. Okay? 18 years into his career... He started his career at 19, so it was in his 37th year of boxing that Sugar Ray Robinson, actually, his 36th year as a person, not as boxing, sorry, his 18th year of boxing, his 37th year as, as, as a person, okay, he was 37 years old or in his 37th year when uh, he beat Common the City. It was a huge feat because Sugar Ray Robinson was considered past his prime. Now, the other important thing to note was that he, this was his 158th fight. So he had 158 fights under his belt. Yes, he wasn't fighting all the top-tier guys. Yes, it wasn't always 10-rounders um, or 15-rounders. But the point is he had all these fights under his belt. That's the important thing. It was a different time. It was a different era. Okay? Now... Having said that with Sugar Ray Robinson, I'm going to show you another person who we should talk about, which is Jersey Joe Walcott. Jersey Joe Walcott was born in 1914, as you can see right here, and he debuted in 1930, which means he was 16 years of age when he deb debuted in boxing, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing. He won the heavyweight championship against Ezra Charles. After Ezra Charles had beaten him by unanimous decision, he was able to knock him out in the seventh round to win a portion of the undisputed heavyweight title, which is known as the NABA heavyweight title, okay? He, he beat Ezra Charles, this is now known today as the WBA. He beat Ezra Charles by knocking him out. The judges' scorecards at the time had him ahead of Ezra Charles five rounds to one. Uh, Charles Duggart added four rounds to one, and Red Robinson had it. A draw, so it was actually a close fight for him. So we're going to get a majority decision if the fight was kept on going as it went this way. Now the interesting thing about it is that when he uh, KO'd Ezra Charles, this was in the year 19, uh, I believe it's 1951, okay? 1951. Now he debuted in 1930, as you can see here. So in 1951... Uh, he beat Ezra Charles, which was 21 years into his career, which is a ridiculous amount of time, okay? 21st year, he KO'd Ezra Charles to win the heavyweight title. And here's even the more interesting thing about the whole thing, is that um, 21 years from his debut means that he was 30, uh, 30, uh, 37 years of age. He was in his 37th year when he beat Ezra Charles. So you'll notice that he was 37. Sugar Ray Robinson was 37. Um, this was his 21st year, though. Sugar Ray Robinson was in his 18th year when he beat um, Carmen Basilio. Uh, but he, there, uh, uh, 
here, um, Jersey Joe Walker beats a younger Ezra Charles in his 37th year and as, as, as existing as a person and in his 21st year as a boxer, which is crazy. Now, the other interesting thing is both fighters lost their first fight. Okay, Sugar Ray Robinson. This was considered a huge feat, and this is why Jersey Joe Walker kind of goes down in the Boxing Hall of Famer. He did a lot of other things, but just the fact that late in his career, this late in his career, because as a child, was a young guy. Jersey Joe Walker was an old guy. It, was, it wasn't supposed to be this way, right? <laughs> but he had managed to beat Ezra, and then he went back just to prove the point, and he beat him again a second time, okay? Now, Now, I want to talk to you guys about one more fighter. Um, so, these were two throwback fighters. And these were considered incredible things at the time. By the way, Jersey Joe Walcott, he had 71 fights. Okay? He had 71 fights in his career. All right? Now, let's talk about some modern guys. And we're going to start off with Juan Manuel Marquez El Dinamita. All right? Juan Manuel Marquez, as you can see, debuted in 1993. He was born in 1973. Basically, Juan Manuel Marquez is as old as my older brother. He's almost 48 years of age, okay, at present time. But he debuted anyway in 1993, which means he was 20 or in his 20th year. This is 1920 years of age, <clears throat> like Sugar Ray Robinson. 1920 years of age when he actually was 19, when he debuted as a boxer. Now, here's the amazing thing about Juan Manuel Marquez. Juan Manuel Marquez won his, light, his last <clears throat> world title against a guy called Sir He Fechenko. Okay? Even though it says Interim World Boxing um, WBO Super Lightweight title, this was upgraded to WBO Super Lightweight title. Okay? Now, the important thing is, he did this in the year 2000, as you can see there, and 12. Okay? Remember, he de debuted in 1995. Right? 1993, sorry. So this is 2012. That basically says 1993, 2012. That was his 19th year of boxing. Again, very remarkable. That, he, that was his last championship win in his 19th year of boxing. And here's the other interesting thing about that. Remember, he was, you know, 19. He was 19 years old, going on 20 years old when he started boxing. 2012, uh, 1993. 19 years, and you add that to the fact that he was 19, 20, right? <laughs> it leads us to 38, 39 years of age. He was in his, he was close to 39. He was in his 38th year of boxing. This is remarkable, okay? He knocked out Manny Pacquiao in his 39th year of boxing, okay? He was 39 years of age, at least, when he knocked out Manny Pacquiao. When he faced Timothy Bradley, he was 40 years of age. He had a split decision loss. This was for a world championship title. And this is very interesting because Timothy Bradley was classed as one, not only as one of the top tier welterweights in the division, but he was pound for pound on the pound for pound list at that time. So this is very incredible that he lost by a split decision once again. Okay? So this is just an interesting note. He was 40 years of age when he faced Timothy Bradley. He was 39 years of age when he faced Manny Pacquiao. Um, and he was 38, going on 39 that same year when he faced Sehi Fenchenko. It's crazy. And again, he was in his um, 19th year of boxing. Okay? These are all incredible facts, if you really think about them. Okay? Now, let's just go on. These guys' careers were long. He had an incredible long career, but we're just looking at where they peaked, where they won their last title. And I'm only looking at when they won it. Okay? Okay. Let's look at another fighter. The Executioner Hopkins. He was born in 1965, uh, January of 1965. He debuted in 1988. That means he was 23 years of age, going on 24. He was in his 24th year. He was 23 years of age when he debuted in boxing, which is pretty late for a boxer to be debuting, okay? And um, he, I don't know how much amateur background he had, but um, he debuted then. Now, here's the interesting thing. His last championship fight in which he attained a title, we'll start with that, was uh, six years. His last title win, the last time he gained a title, was from Beaver Chibonov, which was the WBA. And that last title win was 26 
years, 26 years, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just make sure I got my facts correct. 1988 means 12 years, that's correct. And 14 is 26 years, or his 26th year at least. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, and he got a world title from Bieber Shivana. Now, it was a split decision win. And the judges' scores were Dave Moretti with 161.11 for Bernard Hopkins. Gustavo Padilla had 113.114 for Bieber Shubinoff. And Jerry Ruff had 161.11 for uh, Bernard Hopkins. So he had a split decision win over Bieber Shubinoff. It's crazy. It was his age at that time? Huh. 2014. So he started in, um, we say that's 26 years. So he started boxing at the age of 23. Holy shit. 40 fucking nine years of age. When he beat uh, Bieber Chubinov. Or in his 49th year at least. Okay? He faced Sergei Kovalev. I think he's 48 actually. But I'm not quite sure how that works out. 1965 to 2014. Nope. That would have been his 49th year. And here he'd be 49 years of age when he faced Sergei Kovalev. He was 50, going on 51 years of age when he faced Joe Smith Jr. It's crazy. Alright, I don't know if I'll get him. We gotta hope. We'll take the time and go back. Maybe we'll get him, maybe we won't. Oh, we got him. Okay, good. So Floyd Mayweather Jr., his last championship title win, not defense, win, was against Manny Pacquiao, which is you know, an incredible opponent to even go up against. Pacquiao was, of course, pound for pound, number three in the world at the time he faced him. He was pound for pound number one, I think. Vladimir Klitschko was pound for pound number two. Or they were one and two in the world. It depends on which rankings you're looking at. Pacquiao, I think, was number two with ESPN. Anyway, the point is, Floyd Mayweather Jr. debuted in boxing. He was born in 1977. He debuted in 1996. He was 19 years of age, or going into his 19, 19 years of age, going into his 20th year, when he debuted in boxing. And um, he debuted in 1996, October of 1996. He faced Manny Pacquiao in 2015, uh, the 5th of 2015. So that means that it was his 19th year of boxing when he faced Manny Pacquiao. Obviously, it wasn't 19 years that passed, only 18, but it was his 19th year of boxing when he faced Manny Pacquiao. And what makes this so interesting, in my opinion, and something that I just I just think that we should talk about is the fact that he was pound for pound number one in the world for about I don't know how many years. It was ridiculous. It was a number of years. Well, I believe from 2013 all the way up to 2015, which would have been two years. Okay, straight pound for pound number one year in the world, and faced some ridiculous competition. And here he was. What was his age at the time? So it was his 19th year. He was, at the time, 1977, I believe he was 38 years of age. Yes, he was 38 years of age when he faced Manny Pacquiao. Okay? So the longevity of these guys in the sport of boxing. But I'm going to show you something else that makes it even more remarkable. But first, is there somebody else? Yes, of course. There is one more person we have to talk about. And that person... It's Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. And let me show you just how ridiculous it is what he did. And not only that, but I want to show you something else. So, 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 first of all, Manny Pacquiao. Okay, so Manny Pacquiao was born in 1978. Okay, he was born a year after Floyd. Um, Floyd was born in 1977. You know, Floyd is two years older than him. And he debuted in 1995. January of 1995. Okay. His last, obviously, his last championship fight in which he won a championship was in 2019, <laughs> which is ridiculous, okay? It was in July of 2019, which is more than 24 years after his debut, okay? That's just ridiculous in and of itself. But it gets even more ridiculous because it it basically he's in his 25th year, okay? He faced an undefeated Keith Thurman. Now, he got a split decision win, okay, over the undefeated Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman, as we all know, was the undisputed Super Worldweight Champion of the world. He had to give up a belt because he was retired from boxing for two years. But 
basically, Keith Thurman is bigger, stronger. Um, uh, you know, he's a new generation, he's a new breed, and he was undefeated, and he was a world champion at the time as well. This is ridiculous. The scorecards were uh, Tim Cheatham, 115-112, Glenn Fieldman, 113-114, and Dave Moretti, 115-112. Now, what makes this so incredible, besides the fact that it was 24 years, and that Pacquiao was age 40 at the time he faced uh, Keith Thurman, and in fact, he's close to 40, he's, he, he, he made 40, okay, he was 40 years old, okay. So, so he's in his 41st year. The point about it is this, that... Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao not only beat a really true welterweight, which is bigger than him, but here's the other thing. When you look through Pacquiao's career, year by year, you will see that Pacquiao fought every freaking single year of his career. Look at that. 2010, 2009, 2008, 2007, 2006, 2005. 2004, 2003, 2002, 2001, 2000, 1999, 1998, 1997, 1996, 1995, 1995. Now here's what's so ridiculous about this. This is what's so ridiculous about this. For all the longevity of all these other boxes we just talked about, I want to show you something. Bernard Hopkins, 1998, skip it to 1990, so you missed a year right there. 1990, 1990, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and then skip 2016. Bernard Hopkins, for all his greatness, has not fought every single year of his career. I'm going to show you some more. Because it's, it's really incredible. Floyd Mayweather. Okay, 1996, 1997, 1998. Right? I pushed my stupid head in the way. Sorry about that, guys. 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, and it's a big gap. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. All right, let's skip a gap again. 2017. Okay? I'm going to show you some more. This is what makes Manny Pacquiao so incredible, in my opinion. Let's go to Sugar Ray Robinson for a minute. Shit. Hold on a second, folks. I found this just remarkable when I started looking at it. Sugar Ray Robinson. And he had a hell of a lot of fights, right? Alright, debuted in 1949. 1950. No, no, he didn't debut. We gotta go pages back. That's all right. It's cool. Got a lot of fights. All right. He did. He debuted in 1940 at lightweight. Okay. 1940, 1941. Now they had multiple fights a year. All right. But anyway, 1941. A lot of fights there. 1942, 1943, 1945, he's getting a lot of experience. He's fighting a lot of good guys. 1946, 1947, 1948, 1949. Hold on a second, folks. Fifty. Nineteen fifty one. Nineteen fifty two. And it's a big gap right here. From nineteen fifty two to nineteen fifty five. 
Right, you have a three year gap. 1956, 1957, 1958, 1959, 1960, 1961, 1962, 63, 64, 165. You get easier competition. So 1965. So even Sugar Ray Robinson had a gap in his career. It was three years. All right. Oh, I'm not done. I'm not done at all. Not by a far cry. Jersey fucking Joe Walker. I'm going to show you it with all of them. All of them did the same thing. 1953, 1952, 1951, 1950, 1949, 48, 47, 46, 45. I got between 35, that's all right, 33. Probably got knocked out. Uh, and he didn't get no fights again in 1931, okay, and then 1930. He had two gaps in his career. What I'm trying to say is Pacquiao fought every year. Yes, I know some of these guys fought multiple times a year and maybe two good peers of opposition per year, but Pacquiao consistently fought every year. Every single year. Juan Manuel Marquez. The last one. Juan Manuel Marquez. Let's go over there, Marquez. Dinamita. Pacquiao's nemesis. 19, 4, 2014, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, the only thing is, when he did win his world championship, this is another thing we got to talk about. This is why I tell you Pacquiao's win is so incredible. When he did win his championship, it was against a guy um, called Sahid Krechenko. It wasn't, it wasn't a Hall of Famer. It wasn't a guy with a big, long resume. He was an incredible fighter, and he wasn't even undefeated. Okay, And um, the guy wasn't uh, necessarily the top tier uh, super lightweight champions in the world, obviously, because it was an interim title. So he wasn't the top tier either. Okay? So there's all of that stuff you have to factor in. When you're talking about, um, let's just go back for a minute here. Let's go forward. We're talking about, what is this, Bernard Hopkins? When you talk about Bernard Hopkins, Bibu Shubinov was a WBA world champion. Okay? How long had he been WBA world champion? Let's see. Um, okay, so here he is. He had become WBA world champion. He had defended that championship. He was he was a long he was a, he was a long reigning uh, WBA world champion. So kudos to him, Hopkins, on beating this guy. All right, he had beaten Gabriel Camparillo, the Spanish dude. And he was able to uh, maintain this belt for one, two, three, four, five, six, five, five championships. And he faced guys like Kovacs, um, Joppy. I mean, Joppy was like done already, but he faced Joppy and Camparilla. Okay. Again, you know, it's he, he was he was a good champion, but he wasn't on the level of a Keith Thurman, and he definitely wasn't under. Was he undefeated? I don't even know. Let me take a look. No, he wasn't undefeated either. And he only had 14 fights. So he, there was a lot of experience that he lacked. All right. Cairo Murat was a good fighter as well. He was not undefeated. Of course, he was inexperienced as a boxer. This is where he picked, uh, he defended his light heavy from. Tavares Clark was where he got his light heavy title from. Tavares Clark was undefeated at the time. Um, had just come off, of, I think, one of his good, his best wins or something like that. But anyway, my point is, Bernard Hopkins 
you know, he faced his last championship win was against a fighter who was not undefeated and he was a good it was a good fighter but he wasn't the top he wasn't one of the top lightweights and he definitely wasn't you know listed anywhere in the pound for pound rankings okay Jersey Joe Walker on the other hand he faced one of the top guys in the division which was Ezra Charles and Ezra Charles was you know if we were have pound for pound rankings he would have been up there alright and he beat him not once but twice Okay, which I found was very interesting. Um, was Ezra Charles bigger than Jersey Joe Walker? No. Ezra Charles was a smaller guy than Jersey Joe Walker, as you can see here with the weights. Alright? Keith Thurman Harper was a bigger guy than um he was a bigger guy than um than Manny Pacquiao. Okay. So Manny Pacquiao's accomplishment is just incredible for so many different reasons. Alright? Carmen Basile also was not undefeated. Neither was Manny Pacquiao when Floyd faced him. Um, Carmen Basilio was... Just let me find it. Carmen Basilio was 51-12-7. and seven. He was 52-12-7. When Sugar Ray Robinson beat him, great, also welterweight champion. Um, not the best defensively and so on, but again, once again, you know, it's just incredible how th these guys were able to just bring forth what they brought forth in the ring. So I found that what my impact as achievement was just crazy. You remember, Keith Thurman was a unified world champion, okay, undefeated. I beat the likes of guys like Sean Porter, who's now WBC world champion, and Danny Garcia, who was a former WBC world champion. So, I mean, you just look at what Manny Pacquiao has accomplished and the fact that this guy was boxing every single year. He never had a, a year off in boxing. And yes, he may not have fought as many fights as, say, Sugar Ray Robinson or Jersey. Well, he fought the same amount of fights as Jersey Joe Walker, actually. But um, it's just remarkable. He has the second highest um, duration of time in boxing, pro boxing career where he beat a world champion, a really good world champion. He's only second to Bernard Hopkins. So he was in his 24th year, he was, sorry, in his 25th year, Bernard Hopkins was in his 26th year. So that's the only difference. But when you look at Keith Thurman and what he has accomplished, and by the way, Bernard Hopkins, he had 67 bouts. Manny Pacquiao had 71 bouts, okay? So he has even more bouts than Bernard Hopkins. Started his career much younger. Um, even though Bernard Hopkins was like 49 when he won his last title, whereas Keith Thurman was 40, you look at their career span, and he's not much more, he didn't have much more in his career than, 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 than Manny Pacquiao did, his pro career. Because you really do have to look at the longevity of the pro career as well as the age of the athlete. So with Manny Pacquiao, 24 years in boxing, going on his 25th year when he beat Keith Thurman, Bernard Hopkins was 26 years in boxing at the time, was going on, his 26th year, actually, in boxing, when he beat uh, um, B Bebo Shurvinov. And he didn't beat, uh, I would say, a caliber of opponent as, as good as a Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman had unified, you know, he had unified the division. He had fought some tough competition. Um, people favored Keith Thurman to win. And Bernard Hopkins, even though he was 49 years of old age, which you can't, you can't shirk, he had only spent, at that point in time, 26 years in boxing, which is still ridiculous, but 26 years in boxing, and he had started later than, than Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's in his 24th year in boxing. He's going to be in his 25th year in boxing when he continues to box. By the time he finishes his career, he'll be close to what Bernard Hopkins had, career-wise. That's just ridiculous with uh, more fights. Now, the fact that, Keith, uh, that Manny Pacquiao had more fights does not necessarily mean that... Um, he, you know, he's better than Bernard Hopkins in that respect. But we look at the fights that Pacquiao had and just the kind of fighter Pacquiao is. It's ridiculous. He's a high-energy fighter. He depends on his speed. He depends on his quickness to really win fights. And this guy has maintained his speed and his quickness. And he has been the smaller guy in the ring, at least in dimension-wise, not necessarily weight-wise, but dimension-wise, from the majority of his career. He has no advantages. You look at Bernard Hopkins... Or Sugar Ray Robinson, they at least had a reach advantage. Okay, Bernard Hopkins had a 75-inch reach advantage. 
you know, a 75 inch reach, sorry. And Sugar Ray Robinson had a 72 and a half inch reach. Okay, they were long, lanky kind of guys. They could use their reach to keep the opponents off. They were generally the big, well, at least, not Bernard Hopkins, but Sugar Ray Robinson was generally the bigger guy when he was facing some of these guys. Not always, but generally speaking, he was. And it, at least in, in his last and final successive win of his career where he won a world title, um, he was the bigger guy, okay? Manny Pacquiao, uh, dimension-wise, is not the bigger guy. Keith Thurman had the advantages over him in height and reach, and still he was able to pull this off with a bigger guy who was stronger than you, and he still pulled it off. So it's just so monumental talking about this because when you look at what Manny Pacquiao is able to accomplish, you know, it, when you combine everything, the, the fact that his wear and tear was in, impressive because he's been boxing all his career. And the other thing about it is he didn't really have throwaway fights. Even though he had 71 fights, they were either rematches because the fights were close, okay, and he had to sort out the issue. It wasn't because he was rematching because he had just unanimously beat a guy and he needed somebody else so he fought the same guy again. It wasn't like that. The other thing about Manny Pacquiao, which I thought was very interesting, is that um, he, so, so when you look at Manny Pacquiao's career, and you look at the fights that count, he basically had a tough career. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. You're talking about Keith Thurman, Adrian Broda, Lucas Matisse, who became WBA uh, World Welterweight Champion. That's why Pacquiao was facing him. He faced Jeff Horn. Okay, Jeff Horn's the outlier, but he's undefeated. And he's, he managed to beat Pacquiao, so it is what it is. Jesse Vargas, former world champion. And uh, he was currently the WBO Welterweight Champion. Timothy Bradley, who was, again... It, it, it was a it was it was a, a, a fight for him to, to get to the to be a challenger for Jesse Vargas, and he beat Timothy Bradley again. He faced Floyd Mayweather. It was the only guy he lost to, you know. Uh, Chris Algieri, you know, was a okay. That was a passable one. That that's a smaller guy, but still not a stay busy fight, right? Chris Algieri was they thought he would beat. He was undefeated. He was the junior welterweight champion. Timothy Bradley again when he was the WBO world champion. Uh, Brandon Rios, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Juan Manuel Marquez was his nemesis all his career. Got knocked out by him. Timothy Bradley getting his win over Manny Pacquiao. The first time undefeated guy was just incredible. He had an incredible resume at super lightweight. Juan, again, Juan Manuel Marquez. Shane Mosley, you know, Hall of Famer. Antonio Margarito, you know, a welterweight champion. Really good welterweight champion. Fought him at super welterweight, however. Joshua Clotty, who was a welterweight champion. Miguel Cotto, was, at the time, was the WBO welterweight champion. Ricky Hatton, who was the uh, lineal champion at Super Lightweight. This is back-to-back -back this motherfucker would be fighting these guys, okay? Oscar De La Hoya, David fucking Diaz, Juan Manuel Marquez, Marco Antonio Barrera, Jorge Solis, who was a world champion later on in his career, Eric Morales, Oscar Larios, who was also a world champion. This is the kind of guys he was facing back-to-back. -back. Look at this. Eric Morales, okay? Hector Velasquez, okay, that was, that was an easier one. You know, but hey, Eric Morales, you know, Narongit Parang, okay, Juan Manuel Marquez, Marco Antonio Barrera, okay, Emmanuel Lucero, again, a former world champion, uh, or, or future world champion, uh, Serjan, well, whoever the fuck he is, he's just easy. Okay, but I'm just saying, from the point at which he fought, let me tell you. Okay, so from Eric Morales, the second fight he had, He's been fighting top-tier guys who are actually were former or present world champions. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Non-stop. Non-stop. Or oh, they were current world champions. Non-stop. This is crazy. This is ridiculous. Okay? And some people say, well, there were more world champions today. That doesn't matter. They were elite guys. These are elite guys. And they actually had belts at the time he was facing them. You can't... Go <clears throat> look at Blair Hobbs. I mean, Bernard Hopkins did the same thing, more or less, but still, I'm going to show you something. So, Bernard Hopkins, you know, all right, so he faced, you know, um, Keith Holmes, who's WBC world champion, and to, uh, he defended his IBF title, and he faced Keith Holmes, then he faced Felix Trinidad. Carl Daniels was a, was a good ten contender, but he wasn't a world champion, okay? Moriah Hacker was not a world champion. William Joppy, obviously, was a former world champion. Um... Robert Allen was never a world champion. Oscar De La Hoya was a world champion. You know, Howard Eastman never was a world champion. Good fighter, though. Jermaine Taylor was a world, became a world champion because of him. Antonio Tarver, 
you know, was a former world champion. Winky Ronald Rivas, former world champion. Joe Kozaki, Kelly Pavlik, you know, Eric, Enrique Ornelas, who was not a world champion. Roy Jones Jr. was. Jean Pascal, Jean Pascal, world champion. Chad Dawson, Chad Dawson. Tavares Carl, Kyra Murat, Liebert Shivenach, Sergey Kovalev. You know, George Smith Jr. was on the world champion. So I'm just saying, he, he also kind of did the same thing, but not on the level that Pacquiao did. Not on the level that Pacquiao did. And these are kind of crazy things. I mean, Floyd Mayweather, obviously, he did it. He did it like, you know, he, he did that, right? But Pacquiao also did the same thing. Not even Sugar Ray Robinson did something like this, okay? But, of course, he was fighting more frequently a year. But still, nonetheless, look at this. Look at this, folks. you got to look at this shit. Okay, especially later on in his career, he was fighting top contenders like Joey Archer. And then nobody, 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 nobody for a whole bunch of fights. Joey Giardello was another top contender kind of guy. Um, we got, who else? He was kind of like a gatekeeper. Danny Moyer was another one. He beat him too. Gene Fulmer was a world champion. You know what I'm saying? Paul Pender was a, a world champion. Tony Baldoni, I mean, come on now. In between, you had to stay busy fight. Carmen Basilio, you know, not back to back. And you could say, okay, well, he was doing stay busy fights. Yes, I know it was a different era, but... You know, to show you the kind of caliber of Pacquiao and Mayweather and Bernard Hopkins and, and Juan Manuel Marquez, I'm not, these modern guys were, they didn't have no fucking stay busy fight in between. They stayed sharp and tuned up by sparring and that was it. They had no stay busy fucking fight in between. They had no substandard. Once they became world champions, there was no substandard kind of guy. I mean, come on now. Let me show you something. So here he was fighting Bobo Olsen back to back, great. Rocky Castellini. But who the fuck is God's Panther, man? Who the fuck is that dude? Who's Tell Ola? Johnny Lombardo, we know Lombardo, okay? <laughs> Ralph Tiger Jones, we know him. You know, Joe Rendon, you know, okay. Maxi, uh, Joey Maxim, okay. Rocky Graciano, yes. Bobo Olsen again, yeah. He really beat his ass all the time, but he had the middleweight title. Randy, you no, know, he was a challenger for the middleweight title. All right, whatever. Randolph Turpin. He avenged that loss, okay? Cyril Del now we know he was traveling the world and all of that, I understand. But at the end of the day, you're not fighting competition on your level. You're not. You're not fighting. These, these are Euro, Euro bums that have blown up resumes, right? Cyril Del Noir, you know, uh, Gerald Hurt, you know, Jean Walzak. Come on, man. Jean De Bruyne, okay? You know, these guys were Euro Ja Wens, or Wans, or Wong, whatever. Right, you know, kid Marcel, a lot of experience, but you know what I'm saying. These, 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 as a world champion, you know what it felt like to me, and that's why I said I'm not bashing Sugar Ray Roberts. This is a different era, different time. But when you guys put this guy up on a pedestal, and by the way, these are all ten rounders. By the way, if you haven't been paying attention, they're ten rounders. Okay, but anyway, when you guys do that, there's no championship fights back to back to fucking back. Yeah, it might be the same year, but you don't need those fights, okay? But he was probably selling, promoting himself, whatever. But this is like, this is like, but worse than Deontay Wilder versus Dominic Brazil. It's the worst fucking fight because these guys don't even have a, they're not even contenders, nothing. It's not even a championship fight. I mean, Brazil, come on, he ain't got no fucking defense. You know, Dominic Brazil made it to the top based on politics and also the fact that he's a big fighter who's fighting matched up nicely with other guys, okay? And he's tough. But at the end of the day, you know, he don't belong up there, in my opinion. And people will, will hate on me and they will say, oh, man, you know, Wilder had to face him. It was his mandatory, whatever. I know. I understand. But he shouldn't even have faced Anthony Joshua. Let's be real, people. That dude is not, he's like not, not a boxer. Like, that guy, as I said, Tyson Fury's Tom Schwartz is a better boxer than Dominic Brazil. Dominic Brazil is tough, but he ain't no fucking boxer. Schwartz was a better boxer than him. Let's just be real. He big, he tall, he uses height, he uses reach, you know, he has some power. But he can't box. He really can't box. Like, they talk about Deontay Wilder can't box. This motherfucker can't box. Really, seriously, he can't box. Gerald Washington boxes better than him. Okay? So I'm just saying that, you know, you know, no disrespect to Dominic Brazil, but you ain't got no fucking defense. That's why Wilder just knocked your ass out straight up. You're tough. You know, but Anthony Joshua, he can hit you at, at will. You know what I'm saying? That's not good. <laughs> right? So, I was just saying that, um, you know, they critiqued Wilder for Dominic Brazil. 
But here is uh, Sugar Ray Robinson back in the day. And this is where y'all talk about, oh, my pound for pound best is Sugar Ray Robinson. And y'all actually believe that shit. But here he is fighting a guy 24, 33, and 11 in some fucking foreign country, okay? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like Deontay Wilder going to Europe, right? He goes to some fucking Europe, Eastern European country, right? And faces a dude who is like, um, he got 25, 3 and 1. He got a nice looking resume, but he fought no motherfucker, nobody. He's faced no one, right? I'm going to show you what I mean, because you guys don't think, I don't think you guys fully understand what I'm talking about. This is Jean Wines, okay? He's from France, okay? His whole entire fucking career, he's faced nobody. He faces Randy Turpin, and he loses, okay? Look at this. He lost to Kid Marcel. Nobody. His entire fucking career, man. Look at it. Look at this. Pay attention, please. Watch. And this motherfucker's career. Nobody. The only person he has faced of, of note in his whole entire fucking career is made his fucking day. He's like he's like a modern day Tom Schwartz, except Tom Schwartz got a better record than him. He does. Okay? Which doesn't really mean much because it doesn't really matter. They both didn't fight nobody. Okay? And Tom Schwartz gets this opportunity to face Tyson Fury, right? Okay? This motherfucker faced nobody. And then he gets the opportunity of his lifetime to face Sugar fucking Ray Robinson right here. I got with 125 fights, one loss, and two draws. You just you get that opportunity of a lifetime to face this dude coming off a losing fucking streak. You're, you've been beaten by everybody. And you you got to be out of your fucking mind from France. I mean, this dude being beat, beat. I mean, what are you, what are we really saying? This is worse. Dan Fury versus Tom Schwartz, in my opinion, because even though Schwartz fought nobody, he wasn't getting beat by nobody. You know what I'm saying? Now, I get it. I get it. The fight was, it was worldwide. He went across by Tom Schwartz's area, and he fought him. I get it. But my point is, this is there's a reason why this is not a championship match. There's a reason why, I don't even know why. He, you know he actually went 10 rounds with Sugar Ray Robinson as well? Fucking crazy, huh? But my point anyway is this. He might have been a great boxer. No, not at all. But my point anyway is he was able to survive Sugar Ray Robinson, go 12 rounds with him. And my point is this, okay? Because Sugar Ray Robinson at that time was what? He was... Uh, he was 30 years old, so he was still in his prime. My point is this. Yes, he was an ambassador going all around the world. But you guys critique guys like Deontay Wilder for doing shit better than this. This guy did worse than Deontay Wilder. Yeah, he's fighting multiple times a year, but so was Deont so is Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder said he's fighting many times a year, right? So what's your problem? You know what I'm saying? But you guys go in on Deontay Wilder. You guys go in on uh, uh, Tyson Fury, who's fighting more often than he's ever fought before. But you give this guy a pass because y'all don't really look at your shit. Right? That's the thing that irks me a lot. These guys who talk about throwback fighters and then they want to talk and open their mouth and bump their gum about shit they don't understand. And I'm not saying that Sugar Ray Robinson was wrong for doing that. It was a fantastic thing he did. Okay? My point is, because he's getting, he's getting people to know him. Right? All around the world. He's showing himself up in different spots of the world. It's a nice little uh, promotional ploy. I'm not mad. It's a different time. It's a different era. We have the internet now. We can do all kinds of things. But my, at the end of the day, my point is, you guys go in on these modern day fighters for doing something like this, but you don't realize that this has been happening for a very long time. And then some of you you guys are such hypocritical guys. And, you know, I'm going to do another video on, on, on what the referee said about, you know, stop the eight count and shit. People want to throw it back to the eight count. I'm going to talk about that some other time. But at, at this point in time, you guys always don't realize... Boxing as a sport has evolved. That's why your standards are so high for the present boxers. Alright? Your standards are so high for the present boxers. And you try to literally equate them with past boxers whose standards are lower. And you don't realize that. Right? 
Do you really fucking think that a 12 rounder or a 15 rounder back in the day was at a frenetic pace as a 12 rounder? No, it's not. It never would be. The guys may be even throwing punches with great mean intentions. They may even be quicker boxers than present day boxers. They always had lawns in their fights. Always. They could, you could not maintain that kind of pace for 15 rounds. Even Sugar Ray Leonard versus Roberto Duran, the first fight, had lulls in it. Because they were both tired. They can't just keep going like that for 15 rounds. But think about the fighters today. The younger fighters. Keith Thurman, right? You got Manny Pacquiao. They was going almost nonstop, but of course Pacquiao faded. 